Welcome to Pemidaka, a platform to learn everything about piping design. Visit pemidaka.com for latest updates. In this video, we are going to see what is PNID, what are the informations available in PNID, and how to read the PNID. PNID is an abbreviation of Piping and Instrumentation Diagram, but it is also called as Process and Instrumentation Diagram. However, both represent the same drawing. PNID is a primary input for detail engineering to start developing piping layouts. PNID is a detailed process diagram showing all the equipments, includes all the lines, valves, instruments, and control systems. Generally, PNIDs are divided into multiple drawings because it is impossible to include all the information of a particular process cycle in one PNID. So, PNIDs are generally given with preceding and succeeding sheets continuations. Now, let's see what are the informations available in PNID. PNID generally includes the details of all major equipment such as pumps, vessels, heat exchangers, compressors, and turbines. PNID also shows the details of minor equipment such as strainers, filters, sample coolers, skids, and static mixers. It includes the piping details such as shows all the lines, pipe spec, line size, valves, spec break, it shows flow direction of the line, blinds, line numbers, insulation, and heat racing details. PNID also shows the information of instrument and control systems such as pressure indicators, pressure gauge, temperature indicators, temperature sensors, flow element, control valves and control system connections. It also shows various other information that are vital for detail engineering. Now let's get into PNID symbols. There are lots of PNID symbols used in PNID to represent equipment, piping, instrument, valves and control valves. Piping design engineers must be well conversant with the PNID symbols to be able to read the PNID. The guidelines and the PNID symbols used for the preparation of the PNID are taken from the standards such as ISA S5.1, ISO 10628, and BS5070. Here I have displayed few of the commonly used PNID symbols like equipments, valves, piping and instruments. But these are only few. To get the full list of PNID symbols, you can check the link given in the description of this video. We are not going to go through all the PNID symbols one by one because most of the symbols are self-explanatory and you can read on your own. To download the full list of PNID symbols, please refer the link provided in the description of this video. Now we will see how to read the PNID in 10 simple steps. Step 1. Identify equipments. When you start reading PNID, the first thing to be done is to identify all the equipments in the PNID. Step 2. Identify supply and discharge lines of all the equipments. A PNID may have more than one equipment, but better to identify the supply and discharge of any one equipment first and then move on to another equipment. As in general, an equipment generally have a minimum of one supply and one discharge. Step 3 is going to be identifying associated lines of the supply and discharge. We have identified the supply and discharge lines of an equipment in step 2. Now it's time to identify all the associated lines of the supply and discharge lines. It could be a bypass line, it could be a recirculation line, it could be a line going to a PSV. Step 4 is to trace and identify the continuation. Trace the line all the way up to the end to identify the continuation of the line. If it goes to another PNID, take out another PNID and trace the line to find where it goes and connect it. Step 5 is to check the drains and vents of all the lines. Now we have identified the supply and discharge line, associated lines and the continuation. Now it's time to identify the vents and drains available in the lines. Step 6 is to identify pipe spec and spec break. This is a very important step for a piping design engineer to identify the piping material specification of the line and to identify where the material is getting changed at the spec break. Step 7 is to identify valves. 
Here we identify all types of valves in the PNID. It could be a manual valve or a control valve or a small valve in the drains and vents. Identify all types of valves and its sizes. Step 8 is to identify piping speciality items in the line. There may be a lot of piping speciality items in the line. Let me give you an example like filters, strainers and rupture disc. Step 9 is to identify insulation and heat tracing details. Here we should identify whether the line is insulated or not. And this information is generally given along with the line numbers indicating in alphabet saying N for no insulation, C for cold insulation, H for hot insulation. To identify heat traced lines, we should identify the line with double lines as shown in this box. Here we are in the last step, step 10, identify instruments. In this step, we identify all the instruments in the PNIDs such as pressure gauge, pressure transmitter, temperature indicators, flow elements. There could be many more instrumentation. We have to identify all the instruments in the PNID. Thank you from Pemidaka. Visit pemidaka.com for latest updates and to learn more about piping design engineering.